Planet Earth's Pokemon fans, we're here to talk about episode 51 of Pokemon Horizons. And let me just say, where the fuck did the weekend go? Okay, it's fucking Wednesday, and like, listen, I, wa I technically watched this episode yesterday. Um, and I was gonna make the video yesterday, but by the time I, like, things were just hectic at work, and I wasn't able to get, like, I don't know where the weekend went, but it, it got me delayed. But anyway, so this was, like, one of those chill, like, just mellow episodes of them out and about, which is what I've been wanting out of this show for a while. Okay, I want some adventure. Okay, I want some wild Pokemon encounters. I want them to just look at stuff and, and all this crazy stuff, you know? And I'm, I'm, I'm happy about it. It is leading into a potential watch World evolution next episode, which I'm hyped for. Although, at the same time, I'm a little, like, confused. Why? Considering, like, watch World Watch World hasn't done anything, so it just feels a little weird to have it evolve. But I think this is that's what it's leading to uh, in the next episode. I like the whole camping stuff, like Roy being uh, an amazing outdoorsman because he lived on a fucking island his whole life. So he's just used to this shit, right? And then like Dot, she's always very like good with everything she does. So obviously she's she's got a perfect tent. And then Liko because she's like the newbie who's... She's basically the the pampered spoiled child. Granted, that's not really what she's like, but that's the vibe you go. You've never like you look at her and you're like, you've never been outdoor, okay? You've always been the indoor kid that's always pampered and protected by the parents, okay? So she she was struggling to set up her tent, right? So um, I I like the the dynamic of the group. Okay, they're supposed to be making their reports, right? They're the wild Pokemon reports. So, they're trying to figure out what they want to do. Now, Roy is basically gone this entire episode. This is strictly a Liko episode. Uh, Roy, like, dips to chase off against the Kilowatcho, which I'm assuming is the whole reason that that's, like, the nod to, like, hey, watch what's involved in the next episode. Just, like, why? Um, and then Dot and is, like, communicating with Liko about this phenomenon of, like, this giant pink tornado that just happens around the area. And so, the, the hijinks ensues. Uh, because what ends up happening is that Tropagos, always the problem child, obviously, just wanders off like it always does. And I'm, I want to state this again because I mentioned this, I mentioned this like in like season two of Horizons where I was talking about Sprigatito and her jealousy for like Hatena and Tropagos, mainly Tropagos. And I was always on the... I was always of the impression that they were really pushing for this whole disconnect between Sprigatito and Liko at some point in the show, a la, like, Raboot and Go and, like, Dawn and the fucking Mammal Swine shit and, like, Ash and Charizard and shit like that. Like, I thought that this is what the, they were leading towards and then it evolved and then Florigato's just been chill this whole time, right? But it happened again and I'm, I'm really questioning whether this is like just like they're just nodding off to what it used to happen but like the relationship between Liko and Florigato is so good that it's not gonna get to that point but at the same time like if you keep pushing it I'm pretty sure we're gonna get something something's gonna happen between this fucking turtle and this fucking cat at some point in the show I can just envision it in my mind like it's at some point something's about to go down between these two fucking Pokemon because this is not the first time, it's not the second time, I'm pretty sure it's not the third time, that this, like, I don't know, man, this, this jealousy shit, like, it, it's it's really giving me those vibes, and I, I, I'm, I, I keep thinking, it's gonna happen, at some point, at some point, something's gonna happen, and then, like, Furigato's gonna have, like, this disdain for Liko, because of her fucking affinity and protection of this fucking turtle, okay, I, I'm not, like, gonna full, I'm not gonna go full conspiracy mode on this shit yet, because, it got resolved in this episode, okay? But it's it's if it happens again, okay, if it if this shit happens again, I'm just gonna call it. I'm gonna say somewhere down the line, some shit's gonna happen, and then like the like Tropagos and, and Florigato are gonna get at it, and then like Liko's gonna have to make a choice and some shit's about to go down, okay? That's all I'm saying. Um 
But what ends up happening is that they're, they're like cleaning Hatena and Tropicos like wandering around and like Forigato's all dirty and shit so like Ligo's gonna take care of her but then Hatena gets dirty again so she's like oh sorry like I gotta clean Hatena again because she got all muddy and like Forigato's like it's fine whatever. Um, she, she has an annoyance but the problem is that because Tropicos wanders off then Liko freaks out about it and now Forigato's over here all dirty and shit like what the fuck you're supposed to clean me yeah you're over here worried about the stupid turtle. Right? So then, like, it, it becomes a, a whole thing where, like, Florigato's now on edge, and, like, Liko can't touch her anymore, because Florigato's, like, fur, you know, what, this happens sometimes with cats, okay? But, like, in real life. Um, granted, I, I've only owned a cat once in my life, and it wasn't even mine, right? Uh, we just happened to be taking care of it. Um... And, like, those shit get, like, spiky as fuck if they're, like, enraged or angry or or, so, or anxious, right? So, Liko can't touch Forigato because her fur is sticking out. Like, needles, right? And and that's the other part. It's, like, because she's a grass Pokemon, you know? So, it's, like, leaves and, like, spines and shit. So, so Liko can't even touch Forigato, which then freaks her out, right? Because she's like, oh, fuck, I injured Liko again, right? And then it becomes this whole thing of, like... I don't know, man. <laughs> so, now that they're still, like, trying to chase after Tropagos. And then, this is where, like, I guess the only cool part about... Well, okay. I'm not going to say that I disliked the episode. But the, the the cool part about, for me, was when they get separated. Lico falls in the fucking trenches. And I'm like, damn. Like, Foley Gato is going to be, like, a, you know, worried. Because that's she, just the way she is. And, like, they find Tropagos, and, and because Florigato's, like, not having any of it, you see poor Hatena try to flip Tropagos because it's landing on its back, right? And Hatena can't do it, okay? It's it's this little tiny baby, like, it has no arms, it has this fucking, like, head flops and shit. So it's just, like, trying to flip this thing, unless she can't. And Florigato's like, fine, I'll fucking do it. Because like, she's, like, the big sister, right? So she goes over and picks her up, and then she gets get fucking haywire because Tropico is gonna do some shit again, and then they run away, and they're like, "Fuck, where's Liko?" And then like, this was the like, listen, as a Pokemon fan for the past twenty plus years, right? I I've always had this like weird thing with like the tentacle line because those bitches are dangerous, right? In the lore. They're, they're meant to be, like, these, like, creepy, very sinister Pokemon. Like, Tentacruel and Tentacruel, they're always, like, bitches, right? They're, they're always trying to kill you, right? No, they don't like people. So, anytime you're in the water and those shit bitches are around, like, run. Well, swim if you can because they're going to kill you, right? So, I... <laughs> so, when they showed the Toad School, I thought they were going to go with the whole, like, you're in our territory, we're about to fuck you up, Right? But no, they're like more chill and mellow. So like, <laughs> what, I, what, what ends up happening is there, there's these fucking vines that are like covering the fucking ravine that fucking Liko fell into. And they're like trying to get rid of it. So like, <laughs> she gets found out and I'm like, this bitch is dead. And then Florigato shows up and like... <laughs> She's like ready to, to to do the business. She's like, I'm gonna beat all you fuckers for for attacking my trainer. And Liko's like, No, 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 they're, they're just trying to. And then they fix everything. And then we get the fucking pink tornado shit, which basically is just like the Toad School. Like, the, okay, like this gust of wind comes into the trenches, right? And because of the air pressure building up, it actually became you know turns into a, a whirlpool tornado. Not a whirlpool. It's a fucking tornado. And the fucking Toad Schools. I'll jump into the tornado, releasing their spores, and that's the fact. The, the little, like, pink petal flow, uh, the little pink petal, uh, spores that they release then get sucked into the tornado and then they're able to disperse and, and all that. <laughs> and I gotta admit, that was cool. I, I love that whole sequence. But, man, <laughs> I thought, I thought Lika was gonna die. I thought we were gonna get some Flory got of action. But Toad Schools apparently are pretty chill. Um, and then it's just like them, uh, reconciling. So like, Florigato's now more chill. So Liko's able to hold her, they hug it out, and then they get back to camp. It's night. It, it's nighttime, and they're just talking. So like, 
I don't know. Like, don't, like this episode was so good. I, I really enjoyed it. It's just, I'm, I'm in that state of mind where, like, either commit to the Floyd Gato Lico, like, break off thing. Or stop teasing it, okay? Because, confusing, one. And two, we've already seen this plotline before. So it's not like it's going to be a new thing when it happens. Right? Well, granted, for the people who have been watching the show for all these years, right? New kids probably don't know any of this shit. But for someone like me, who has seen this storyline play out with at minimum three fucking characters from four, it ain't nothing new. But anyways, that's basically going to be it with this review. Um, I'm going to now edit it and upload it today. And I'm going to try my best to keep up with it. Because, like, this guy probably going to be the first. Like, the next episode, which is, like, a, a Roy-centered one, right? I think will probably be my first time not liking a Roy episode, depending on how they handle it. I'm still not comfortable with Watcher evolving, okay? Because this bitch hasn't done shit at all this entire time. So it just feels completely unearned. And I'm going to call it out, okay? You, you can count on me. If I don't say anything about it when I review the episode, feel free to comment down in the comments because my Roy bias will not be used against me this time around, okay? I refuse to let my affinity for this character blind me from this horrible decision. That's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I've been your boy, Sosa Croxon, and I'll see you guys in future videos, streams, shorts, and everything in between. <laughs>